Hey, what's going on? Happy Friday, BQ here. Do me a favor, hit subscribe if you are a fan of Global Force and Impact Wrestling and enjoy hearing positive discussion as I do each week on my podcast covering Impact. Hit subscribe. We'll have a have a little fun here on the YouTube channel. So what I wanted to talk about today is something that's been bothering me a little bit the last last few days because any negative energy towards the company does bother me quite a bit because this is a company that I love very much and I'm and I'm not a I, I, I was never a, um, a I'm not some TNA mark let me put it like that I'm I'm a mark for the current company but I was never uh, one of those guys that were, was just on this um, you know this bandwagon from day one and just was this hardcore fan like there were there were years where I was a very casual fan of it but. Over the years, it's just become the wrestling company. When I put all of them on a level playing field, it's just been the company of like the best. So it does hurt me when I see the negative stuff, especially when I feel that it's unwarranted. So Rockstar Spud said it best. He said this a few weeks ago. If it was so bad here, nobody would be here. Uh, makes sense, right? If it was so bad, no one would be there. No one would sign there. No one would re-sign there. If it was so terrible. Now, they've had their ups and downs. I get it. So, Dave Meltzer. And I'm going to get into my opinion of Dave Meltzer here in a little bit. And it's probably not as negative as you might think it might be. Now, with everything I do with these vlogs, it's a mixture of factual knowledge, factual evidence, and opinion but I've always said don't have an opinion if it's not an educated opinion so when I have an opinion on something I do feel like I know enough about it and I believe I have enough common sense to have that opinion so if you don't agree that's cool you know let's talk about it in the comments I want to know what you guys think but subscribe before you speak all right so anyway after Global Force Wrestling had a very tremendous day the other day with positive news, and this was when it was leaked about John Hennigan, uh, Taya, um, Drago, all being at the live events. And then we got some pretty good news on El Patron, which I don't think he's an innocent man by any means, but, you know, pretty good, got some pretty good news regarding that as far as that outcome. And Melter, Dave Melter, okay. Now, he has a habit of doing this. He released a report. What he has a habit of doing is just when, when positive things are going on, he drops something. He drops some kind of bomb on us. He reports that GFW is taking 10% of booking fees and keeping all merchandise fees, or uh, not merchandise fees, but um, money for merchandise sold to the Shop Impact website. Now, as I've said, he has a habit of doing this whenever there is any kind of momentum. And the only reason that he didn't do this during Slammiversary, before Slammiversary, and I don't mean to sound like an asshole by any means when I say this or some kind of huge dick, is because I believe he his father might have passed or he had a, a death in the family. So, uh, you know, no one deserves that. No one deserves to go through that. But basically, the point I'm trying to make is he was out of the office those days he had something personal going on because I think we all expected some kind of some kind of bomb before slam reversary so um the reason you know that he times these a certain way the, the way that I, the reason I feel that way is because this whole 10 percent thing about keeping 10 percent of the booking fees this is old news this was news from March it was broken a few months ago and he rehashed it Along with this whole merchandise thing. But he, he rehashed old news this week when the company was gaining some momentum. They had a couple you know great weeks of ratings, of improved ratings. And um, here's my thing on Dave Meltzer. I've heard him give, over the years, TNA props where props are due. I never felt he was someone that just... you know I've listened to some of his podcasts and things, uh, written certain articles. I never felt he was someone that... Um, just had it out for the company 100% of the time. I don't feel that way. Um, I don't. I don't think he's in the business of doing that, but I think he does know who his target audience is, and he plays at that. He plays at those who want to hear negative news about the company and who enjoy hearing negative news about the company. 
So for the record, the only person uh, that I feel is in the business of trying to put the company down is uh, Jason Solomon, Solomonster, which is a um, mighty big name for someone who looks like such a pussy in real life. But anyway, he's the only person that I feel is in the business of really truly trying to put the company down. Because if you listen to his stuff, and I've listened to some of it, there was a time where I listened quite a bit. Every time he gives props and says, okay, well, I, I like this, um, he always follows it up with a negative. Always. And that is the sign of someone who wants to put something down. When I was an instructor in the military, they always taught us as an instructor, point out all the negatives first and then build people up with the positive. Because if you put out the positives first and then the but, it comes across as that's all that really matters to you and that's what's important. So he's in the business of doing it. I don't think Meltzer is so much, but let's talk about this rumor. It's not really a rumor because it is fact. It's just the way that it was spun. So first of all, if you have a problem with this whole 10% thing, you can blame the Hardys for that. The Hardys use the TNA television and digital platform to get themselves over, to get their gimmick over. They didn't get anyone else over. They didn't get the DCC over. They didn't get Decay over, which those were very popular teams within the company. They got themselves over and reaped the financial rewards on the independent scene with TNA not receiving any kind of monetary compensation. All right, so they used the platform, got themselves over, worked as much as they wanted on the independent scene, made as much money as they wanted, and the company got nothing in return for it. That gimmick would have never gotten over. Not to the extent it did. I'm not going to say it wouldn't have gotten over. Not to the extent it did if it wasn't on that TNA platform. So you can be someone, I, you know, I, didn't, I don't like Impact. I don't like TNA. Fuck them. But you've seen the broken stuff. You've gone on the YouTube and seen it. There isn't a wrestling fan alive that hasn't seen it. So a lot of wrestlers have agents. Not all of them. But many of them do. And... In this case, Global Force Wrestling is acting as the booking agent. They control the booking and they take a cut just as any agent would do. And it's 10%. If you, if you are not good at math, 10% of $100 is $10. Of $200 is $20. Of $300 is $30. Now, if you've spoken to anyone on social media that has half a brain, they've already explained all this to you. But if you're one of those people who think the company is blackballing the wrestlers, then, you know, this this rant is for you. This is all for you, okay? They're keeping 10% as, as any agent would do. Now, the guys and girls, like I use with the Hardys example, they can work as much as they want on the indies. So in order to protect their assets, assets, because they are the ones with the television product and these guys are contracted to them, they take a small cut. Now, do you not think that the WWE takes a cut from their wrestlers' public appearances? When John Cena is on Good Morning America, do you think the WWE only takes a measly 10% of that? Hell no. These guys work as much or as little as they want to. LAX said it. All they do is wrestle. Eddie Edwards said it. All he does is wrestle. Drew Galloway, all he did was wrestle and ended up biting the company in the ass because he got injured. But booking fees aside, th these guys sell as much merchandise as they want. They can have their own website. They can have pro wrestling tees. They can go to the independent shows and sell their shirts. If you've been to independent shows like the ones I go to, the wrestlers will be around the ring. They'll have their t-shirts hanging. They'll have a bunch of signed 8x10s. They'll have pins. They'll have bracelets. Um, I remember Sammy Callahan had some DVDs of uh, shows he was on. And these guys make some pretty decent, if the, if the crowd is a decent size, which when Impact books their guys out, EC3 was saying this, you know, he makes, they make sure they're, they're going to worth, uh, worthwhile indie promotions, not ones that got five or 10 people in the crowd. So these guys, the opportunity is there for them to sell their merchandise as much as it, of it as they can. And the company's not touching that. They're touching the booking fees. And if the booking fees is a few hundred bucks, they're not really giving up that, that much it might even be less than what an agent would charge. You know, I'm not an expert in that by any means. Maybe some of you are. I don't know. Leave something in the comments. There was a, I went to Glory Pro Wrestling not too long ago. Cody Rhodes was there. He was the headliner. 
uh, Marafuji and DJ Z were the other, you know, headliners as well. Um, based off the package, I know that Cody was charging for a signed picture and a, and a autograph, uh, signed a photograph. I'm sorry. And how many people were there? Uh, not so much how many were there, but he said, "I'm only doing 150 people." Okay. So 150 people at $25. I mean, the guy made over $2,000 in half an hour work. Now, DJ Z and Mayor Fuji, both these guys were not um, not as high in demand only because the lines were so long for Cody. You know, people had to stand in line for the entire intermission to, to get up to him. So, you know, let's just say they had, for the sake of argument, 20 people pay 15 bucks for a picture with them. Well, now they made 250 bucks for half an hour work. All right. It's on top of the booking fee. So these guys are not getting blackballed. So if the global force is keeping the profit from a few things they sell online, it's because nobody is going to take advantage of their platform again, especially when they're making their own money on the indie scene. I've got no problem with this. It's good stuff. In my opinion, please subscribe to my channel. This is BQ. I'm out.